Well, if you have your Bible, stand with me and go to the fifth chapter of the Gospel of Mark, your Bible or a copy of the Word of the Lord. The fifth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. And I want to begin reading at verse 25. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd, said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see this multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. Amen. You may be seated in the very presence of our God. Most translations translate verse 28, not for she said to herself, the original Greek Koinonia text in most translations say, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, for she thought to herself. I want to preach tonight as the Spirit shall guide with this thought in our minds, think your way through it. Think your way through it. I read a wonderful book by a Canadian theologian once entitled The Decline of African American Theology. And in the book, the author suggests, and I agree, that much of the theology in the modern day black church has become so diluted that we no longer know what we believe. It is his assessment and I have to come into agreement with him that much of the modern day church majors on emotionalism while abdicating the responsibility of intellectualism. In other words, much of what we do today in church is centered on soliciting certain feelings from people. But as a result, we don't challenge them to do much thinking. So as a result, more often than not, too often than not, we walk out of the worship experience feeling good, but when asked what happened in the service, we can't tell anybody. Because all we walked away with was a feeling, but no thought. When you read the Bible, beloved, you will discover that by and large, the move of God is not about getting us to respond off of feelings, but off of our thinking. God does not simply want you to be a feeler, but he wants you to be a feeler as a result of what you've been thinking. That when you get to the height of the praise and euphoria, God does not want your run to be driven by the syncopation of the Hammond B3 organ, but he wants your shout, your run, your clap, and your hand to be driven by the thoughts that came through your head. Now all that sound good, here's the way grandmama put it, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. I thought I had some thinkers in here and all he's done for me. As a result of my thinking, my soul cries out, hallelujah. It's, it's dangerous, the black church, because by and large, African Americans who are African at their core are already rhythmic innately. So that because we are rhythmic, sometimes we're jumping because the rhythm got in our head, but nothing else got in our heart. Oftentimes we are moved because 
the beat sounds good, but we haven't thought about the goodness of the Lord. Tonight, I want to suggest one thing to you. You can change your life when you change your thinking. I'll say that again. You'll change your life when you change your thinking. We discover here a woman who has, uh, let me put this the best way I know how to put this, uh, the best politically correct way I can put this. She has a gynecological condition that is causing her to bleed consistently without ceasing. That was kind of good, wasn't it? Yeah, she, she has, yes, a gynecological condition that is not a monthly visitation, but is a daily consistent thing. Y'all don't get that sanitized on me. She has a gynecological condition that goes on without ceasing. Let me park for just a minute. She's bleeding, the text says, Henry, but she's bleeding in a private place. Y'all didn't get it. She's, she's bleeding in a place nobody can see, which means because she's bleeding in a private place, it might be easy to fake her bleeding. She's bleeding, and unless you know her condition, you would not know she had a condition because she's not bleeding where folk can see it. She's bleeding where she can hide it. Come here. Because there are many folk that come to church every Sunday and whatever day else you come, and they are ble bleeding in private places. But you're dressed so good, you smell so nice, and you shout so loud that nobody knows that you are a public success but a private failure. There are many people that come to church every Sunday and they dress up their pain so that they can put on an image for folk they don't like and don't like them. In reality, there are some people in here tonight who are bleeding in private places. You've got private pains and private problems and private struggles and private situations. As a matter of fact, by the time you get home every night, all you want to do is go to bed because you have spent all of your energy all day long faking like you got it together while inside you are bleeding and nobody knows it. But here is the problem. The fact that the story <laughs> is in the text means now her private business has gone public. Preach, boy. Can I help you? Can I shout you real quick? Her private business has gone public, and yet it has not done anything to kill her. See, you know you're chosen when your private business goes public and it still don't kill you. You know you are anointed when your private business goes public and it does not destroy you. And some of y'all can testify tonight that you've had some private struggles that got out in the public information and yet in spite of everybody knowing it it did not destroy you as a matter of fact you ought to just take about 10 seconds and shout over the fact that when people found out your problem it did not change your character and, uh, sit down you, ha you have to remember that that in the bible Blood represents life. Uh, so in a real sense, for 12 years, she has had a condition that's taken the life out of her. Jesus. But here's what I love about her. She has not given up on life even though she's been losing life. And, and the Bible says she goes to Dr. After doctor, she spent all of her money, I'm coming back to that, all of her money trying to get her life back together. Her money is depleted. Her body is depleted. But in spite of being depleted, she still gets delivered. Y'all ain't happy. I'll come back to y'all later. In spite of being depleted, she still gets 
delivered. And the text suggests to us tonight, y'all, that deliverance starts with how you think. Mm. I'm going to get in trouble with this Neo-Pentecostal church. Deliverance doesn't start with somebody laying hands on you. Deliverance doesn't start with you speaking in tongues. Deliverance doesn't start with somebody slapping oil on your face. Deliverance doesn't start with you getting on an airplane and going to somebody's conference. Deliverance does not start because they put a white sheet over your body. Because if your thinking don't change, your life ain't going to change. But if I change my thinking you ain't got to lay hands on me I ain't got to fall out I ain't got to fake a tongue and I ain't got to wipe grease off my head because if I can get my thinking together I can get delivered I dare you to touch somebody and tell them what you've been thinking yeah that was the wrong neighbor turn to somebody else and ask them what you've been thinking you better not do that. I'm coaching for real. We'll have some church in here. Uh, and watch, watch the text. The text says, she thought. I'm just playing. You can do that all you want. She thought to herself. I don't want you to miss this. With all she's been through, Jesus. With all that should have wiped her out. With all she has lost. She's lost money. She's probably lost family. She's lost stature. She's lost respect. She's lost spiritual access. But with all that she's lost, the one thing she did not lose was her mind. Y'all didn't get it. Because she could only think to herself because she still had her mind y'all didn't get it can I tell you tonight I don't care what you're going through I don't care what you're feeling if you still have the capacity to think then the devil has not won I wish she would just grab somebody real quick look them dead in the face and tell them I still got it yeah no I mean look at them really in the eye and tell them I still got it now just in case they don't know what you mean tell them I I still got my mind I lost a whole lot but the one thing I haven't lost is my mind and somebody in Highland Park ought to jump up and shout real quick because with everything that you've lost with all that you've been through you should have been crazy by now but you still got your mind and you're still in your right mind you could have been depressed but after all the hell you caught after all the struggles you've been through you ought to just throw your head back and give God a praise because you still got your and here's the evidence I got it because I woke up this morning I feel it now with my mind stayed on I wish I had somebody who can just say if you can think you can survive it if you can think you can make it I dare you to high five three people and tell them I'm broke but I got my mind might be unemployed but I got my mind might be divorced but I got my mind might not be back in school but I got my She thought. She thought. <laughs> she thought to herself. If I can just touch. Hold on. We ain't ready for that shout yet. Here's what blessed me about that, Pastor Davis. God gives her a vision without finances. Come here. I'm trying to help somebody. God gives her a strategy, a plan, an idea, and a vision, and she ain't got no money. 
See, I'm talking to somebody who knows that there's an entrepreneurial anointing on you and you waiting on a bank to give you the capital, but God sent me to tell you, you don't need the money to have the vision. You don't need the money to have the strategy. He'll give you an idea and you ain't got no money because here's what God will do is in the text. God will use people to birth ideas in you. Can I prove it in the text? The only reason she got this idea is because the text said she heard about Jesus. Preach, boy, y'all didn't get it. She only got this idea because of what somebody else spoke to her that birth a plan in her see you don't want to hang out with nobody that ain't helping you birth something in your life you don't want to be connected to people who can't speak to you and challenge you to do something better than you're doing right now i'm a living witness that people god will use people woo, who are aware of resources you don't know about Because if the text is right, and it has to be right, it means she did not know about Jesus till they told her about Jesus. So she's connected to somebody who knows about a resource she doesn't know about. See, that's why you better be careful hating on folk who got more than you. You better get connected to them because favor is when God connects you to people who use their resource and influence to help get you to where your purpose is supposed to be. So let me show you. Let me show you what happens when you get your thought life. I ain't going to be long. Um, I'm going to do it. Here's what the text suggests. I love this. What you say has more authority than what you possess. Okay. Um, oh, um, she no longer possesses finances. But she does possess faith. I think I heard three claps and that's all I heard. Um, she ain't got no finances. But she got faith. And everybody that knows that this next part is true. And you ain't ashamed that your neighbor don't know you. Ball, you ain't balling out of control. You'll shout on this. Faith can take you where finances can't get you. I thought I'd get a better shout. Right, 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 right through it now. Yeah, yeah. Faith, yeah, will get you access to places your money can't get you in. God, help me in here tonight. See, the void of her finances did not discredit the validity of her faith. Preach, Bishop. The text says that the woman is now broke. She's run out of financial resources, God. But she is saying something of faith even though she has nothing in finances. And we know that she's saying something in faith because Jesus says to her, it's your faith. You, you, you didn't register for my conference. It was your faith. God, I'm going to get in trouble now. You, you didn't send me $59.95 for my prayer oil. It's your faith. Y'all don't want to talk to me now. You, you didn't send me $35 for my holy water. It was your faith. She, 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 she is saying something of faith. Even though she ain't got, if I can just touch it. I've heard this preach all of my life and I've heard not all the time, but I've heard it oftentimes preach wrong. Contrary to what I've heard oftentimes, Daniel, she doesn't run out of doctors. That ain't nowhere in the text. She, oh Jesus. She does not end up trying Jesus because she done tried everybody else. That's a cute preach, but it's an eisegetical preach. I'm going to preach it up. She does, that's a good preach. She tried Jesus because she had tried everybody else. No, she tried Jesus because she ain't have no more money to try everybody else. See, sometimes you ain't ready for breakthrough until you get broken. Preach, boy. Sometimes you got to be broke before you ready to get. She, it never 
never says she's out of doctors. She no longer goes to doctors because she ain't got no money. <laughs> but now, because she ain't got no money, ain't no doctors helping you. See, people, God, mm, I'm going to get in trouble. Um, people will work with you for the money. <laughs> But if you stop paying them, you'll see where their heart really is. I don't know who this is for, but somebody, God will let you stay broke so you'll know who's real with you. God help me. Because the real folk don't help you because you got money. Real folk help you because they got a heart. And this, this, point, this point messed with me because this modern day prosperity materialistic theology that I'm hearing in the church is putting us in bondage y'all ain't got to say nothing to me now please don't get me wrong I ain't got nothing against being rich I ain't taking a vow of poverty I ain't trying to be broke but it's a lie that the barometer of the maturity of your faith is seen in how much stuff you got. Because I know folk got a lot of stuff but ain't got no faith. Come on, I wish y'all would talk to me. This modern day church begging God for money. And because we beg God for money, we have now bastardized money. And alienated the supernatural. Because sometimes you looking for money and God wants to give you a miracle. Preach, boy. I feel like preaching in here. And you spend so much time asking God to send you money when God really wants to give you a miracle. Now, I know a whole lot of y'all, you ain't never had money problems. I know some of y'all been balling all your life. But there are few of us in every section who are honest enough to admit tonight that we've had some money moments that made us miserable but God still provided the miracle how many of y'all can testify tonight that the money never showed up but you didn't go out of school your lights are still on the car is still in the driveway you still got your house how did it happen and the money never showed up it's because a miracle showed up and people are trying to figure out how you look that good when it's broke as you are you ain't got nothing new on you you did your own hair you need to let them know it's a miracle I look this good cuz I ain't got no money but God provided I want you to shake somebody's hand and tell them get ready for a miracle no I need you to shake it like you mean it I mean shake it like you mean it and tell them don't trust the money trust the master because if you trust the master he'll give you a miracle without you ever getting the money let me show you something else I'm about done She got faith, even though she ain't got no finances. There's something else here. Um, <laughs> for faith to be real, convicting articulation has to turn into corresponding action. Preach, boy. Um, con convicting articulation has to turn into corresponding action for your faith to be authentic okay that's McKissick let me give you Bible faith without is so my faith is my articulation but my work is my action that evidence is my articulation was authentic okay okay what's text what's text um she talking she said if I can just touch him if I can just touch I can just touch him. Um, now remember, she ain't got no money. And, and, and what has been the norm for her is that she gets help based on what she can pay. 
She ain't got no money this time. But she's still acting like she can get help because of what she heard. She says, if I can just touch. See, your, your faith conversation cannot be constructed around the content of your context. What you mean? Your faith conversation can't be predicated on how good things are. Anybody can shout when all the bills are paid. Anybody can shout when you get a good bill of health from the doctor. Come on, y'all done got quiet. Anybody can shout when all your children are acting right. But a real praise is when you can't pay all the bills, can't find a job, broke as a joke, children crazy, money crazy, spouses crazy, single sleeping in a double bread, and yet you can say, with my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise because my praise ain't about what I got my praise is about who he is and what I am expecting look at this one all she got is an expectation God help me so her conversation huh? Is simply based on an expectation. If I can touch it. She didn't say I might be made whole. Y'all ain't helping me. She said if I can get to it. I have an expectation. That what nobody else could fix. He could fix. So, so I'm going to shout on the expectation. While I wait on the manifestation. I know we are Baptist church. But I want y'all to act Pentecostal for a minute. And I need somebody who can say I ain't got it yet. But I'm going to shout on the expectation. That God is about. Come on. Come on. I know y'all Baptist. But act Pentecostal for a minute. And just show the devil he can do whatever he wants to do you go expect it until you get it and you go shout on expectation until you see the manifest I want you to leave your seat and find three people and tell them expect it until you get it expect it until you get it come on don't shake their hand like it's a dead fish but yank on them like you're going to yank them all the way to Pennsylvania Avenue and tell them expect it until Will you get it? Expect the house. Expect the business. Expect your child to graduate. Expect your marriage to work out. Expect your business to explode. Expect your ministry to take off. And shout on expectation. Hold on. We can't take the exit there. Sit down. We can't take the exit there. Cause. We can't take the exit there. No, no, no. No. Cause. Cause. She talked with expectation. But then that expectation had to manifest itself in action. She didn't say, if I could just touch him in his garment, I'd be whole. And then sit down. And think he was just going to show up in her house. She didn't just. She didn't just. Talk with expectation and just say. Sit down talking about when the praises go up the blessings going to come down. There's cute phraseology but bad theology. Oh I know I'm getting in trouble now. Because I know a whole lot of folk. Got praises going up and they got real faith. And they still ain't got what they were looking for. She goes to where he is. So if I could use my sanctified imagination. That means after she talked her expectation. Woo, she got up and got dressed. Because she said, God, I feel it. She said to herself, I'm going to go get what I say. Because I can't get what I say if I just sit here where I talk. Oh, see, see, the reason some of y'all ain't shouting is because Christians got good game, but we ain't got good action. We got a good talk game, 
but we don't have the actions to manifest the miracle and to make the miracle happen there has to be an element of participation where you get up and go get what you say God's got for you now, now let me help you um, if you're going to do this if you're going to get this kind of supernatural miracle you got to understand some stuff because you've got to remember, I know where I am, so y'all know this kind of stuff. This kind of condition, she can't touch anybody. Anything she sat on, they had to burn. So she ain't supposed to be out in public. Jesus, help me. And the fact that the text says she heard about Jesus meant there's somebody who knows she got this problem even though they can't see it. So she got to go out in the crowd. Y'all like God. She got to go out in the crowd that is consumed with people who will be critics of her actions. Because to get to Jesus, she got to move through the crowd. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I ain't supposed to touch you. But excuse me. She, and she got to deal with people who are whispering and criticizing her because they know she ain't supposed to be out there. And she acting differently than how they told her she's supposed to hang. Oh, it's going to get good now. They done put a label on her and they put a definition on her dysfunction. And she's supposed to act like they told her she's supposed to act. But when you need something bad enough and when you know Jesus got what you need, you will make yourself know respect of persons and you'll do whatever you got to do to get what you need to get I wish I had a witness in here you won't care who's sitting next to you you won't care if they cutting the side at you because you talking too loud and moving around too much they just don't know they ain't got the hell you got but if they had the hell you had they'd be doing the same thing you doing moving through that crowd let me tell you one last thing I love this last part here's why you got to make it through it all because what you say is going to make sense for somebody else's struggle Um, if you really know the text, you know that this story is really not about her. It's about Jairus. <laughs> see, see, this woman is just an intermittent parenthetical movement in the midst of Jesus going to Jairus' house. Preach, boy. He, 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 you got to read the whole pericope. He, he, Jairus has come to him and said, my daughter's about to die. Now, you got to remember, Jairus is a synagogue leader, which means he's a devout Jew, which means he don't believe in Jesus. Come on, let me work it. So the fact that we know he's a devout Jew and a synagogue leader and he has come to Jesus, we can exegetically deduce that he has tried everything Judaism has to offer and it ain't worked. But because Jesus knows he's a synagogue leader, Jesus knows he's coming to him on superstition and not on faith. And Jesus don't move on superstition, but because he wants to bless the man, he's going to work on his faith so his faith can move for the miracle. So, so, so they walk in. Yeah, we in D flat. Yeah, I'm a cute D dog. Yeah. So they walk in, they walk into Jay Iris' house. And out of nowhere, G stopped, said, hold up. Well, he didn't say hold up, that's my interpretation. He said, Who touched me? And the disciple love the Shakespearean language of the King James Version. They said, You see all these folk thronging you. 
that's just a Shakespearean word to say, Jesus, how are we supposed to know who's touching you when everybody's touching you? And Jesus' response, my interpretation is, no, y'all missed it. He said to the disciples, everybody touching me, but not everybody that touched me got something from me. Can I pull over real quick? That's the problem with a whole lot of church folk. You touching Jesus, but ain't touching him and getting something from him. Because you ain't touching him by faith. You touching him by superstition. You touching him because he's a superstar. You touching him. Y'all ain't helping me in here. You can touch him and don't get nothing if you ain't touching him with faith. So, I'm about done, I promise you. I love the particularity of the text. Text said that the woman heard it. Watch this. And she knew it had to be her. Watch this, because if you read the text, oh God, this is going to get real crazy. She knew she had been healed. Read the text. And she knew it, Hank, because the text said she felt in her body. Now, I don't want you to miss this. Remember I told you her issue is in a private place. So Bishop, um, she can't check it to see it. So she got to believe it because she feels it. Y'all ain't helping me. Y'all ain't helping me see. Yeah, she she don't know she been healed because she see it. God help me. She knows it because she feels it. See, every now and then you can't wait to claim victory till you see it. Sometimes you got to claim victory because you come on. I'm looking for a few of y'all in here tonight who can say, I ain't seen it yet, but I gotta feel it. That everything, yeah, gonna be all right. Yes, Grandmama say, here's how I know the Holy Ghost. I thought I had some old school church. The Holy Ghost done told me. Go to shake somebody's hand and tell them, I got a feeling you coming out. I got a feeling your deliverance is on the way. I got a feeling your breakthrough is on the way. I got a feeling God's gonna turn it around. I don't see it yet, but I... dare you to take about 15 seconds and shout because you feel 2018 I said holler because you feel the devil should have killed you before you felt it but since I feel it I'm a shout like it's already Hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Thank you, big bro, for bringing me, I'm done. The text said, homegirl came out, read the text now, and told Jesus the whole story. When she got sick, how she felt when she got sick, who recommended the first doctor? How much money she paid the doctor? How she felt worse after she left the doctor? Who recommended the second doctor? How much she paid the second doctor? What the second doctor told her to do and it didn't work? How she felt sicker after the second doctor? Who told her about the third doctor? What the third doctor told her to do? How much she paid? I don't know how many doctors, but she told me, now, now if I'm J. Iris, and I have told you my daughter is about to die, you gonna make me stand here and listen to the testimony of somebody who already got what I still need? And Jesus said, Mac, I ain't do it for her. I did it for him. Don't miss what I'm about to do. He said, because he didn't need a regular testimony. He needed a blow your mind irrefutable testimony. I said, Jesus, what's so irrefutable about the testimony? He said he needed to hear the testimony of somebody
somebody I healed that had been sick as long as his daughter had been alive. I'm done. Because the woman had been sick 12 years and his daughter was 12 years old. He said he needed to hear that I healed somebody that's been sick as long as his daughter's been living. And if I could do it for her, I could show sure enough do it for him. I'm done. Go and grab somebody by the hand. Come on, this participation time and tell them everything God's done for me. I want you to know he did it because if he did it for me, he can do it for you. That was the wrong neighbor. Some of y'all better find another neighbor. I want you to grab somebody. Grab them by the hand real quick and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I need to tell you what he did for me so that you will know he's able to do the same thing for you. Is there anybody in this room tonight that the Lord has healed? Then you ought to run and tell somebody. Is there anybody tonight that the Lord has made ways for? Then you ought to run and tell somebody. Is there anybody in this room tonight that the Lord has opened doors for? Then don't just clap, get out your seat and go and find somebody and tell them it is no secret what God can do what he's done for others he will do for you can I give y'all my story about seven years ago I had a 12 hour back surgery my vocal cords got paralyzed and the doctor told me I'd never sing and I'd never preach again five years ago I had prostate cancer and they had to take my whole prostate out but here I am giving God the praise with the voice they said that wouldn't work so if he did it for me he will do it for you but I don't think I'm the only testimony in Highland Park tonight so would you do me one favor grab your neighbor by the hand and tell your neighbor neighbor oh neighbor he will do it for you that was the wrong neighbor turn on the other side put your arms around somebody shake them and rock them rock them and shake them shake them and rock them and tell them neighbor will fix it. God will move it. God will do it. God will turn it around. God will heal it. God will deliver it. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he fight your battles? Won't he make your enemies your footstool? Won't he give you joy and sorrow? Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Won't he try your tears? Won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he, won't he? Because I know my miracle is on the way. Because I know God's about to turn it around. I'm not going to wait until I see it. But I'm going to shout right now that it's on the way. And high five somebody and tell them it's on the way. Whatever you need, it's on the way. Whatever you need, he will provide. I don't know when, and I don't know where. And, but one thing I know, lay that weight upon the Lord. I want you to find somebody. Look them dead in the eye. 
and tell them this next shout is not for my life. This next shout is not for what he's going to do for me. Come on, some of y'all need to get up. Lose that bougie Baptist thing and find you somebody. Look up Dan in the eye and tell him this next shout is for everything he's about to do for you. Now shout for your neighbor. Scream for your neighbor. Holler for your neighbor. Jump for your neighbor. If you ain't afraid, run for your neighbor. Dance for your neighbor. I said holler for your neighbor. Holler for their children. Holler for their marriage. Holler for their finances. Holler for their business. Holler for their healing. Holler for their breakthrough. Now turn that holler into a dance. And dance for your neighbor. Come on, we might as well be coaching. Cut that glory button on. And let's dance. Yeah! <laughs>
button off. Because I'm trying to see how real your praise is. Because if it's real, you don't need a glory button. You don't need a drum. You don't need a hammer. You don't need nothing. So without instruments, let me see if you got a real praise. Because you just thought it and felt it that God just brought breakthrough into your life. Holler like you feel it. Holler like you feel it. Because you ought to go some, just some worship. Just kind of flow. I don't want anything anybody's going to sing. Just kind of the song of the Lord as he lays it on your fingers. I don't want nothing they can say. Just play. Just, just worship him with that instrument. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am not here on engagement. I am here on assignment. I'm too old to take engagements. I'm 53 years old. I take assignments. God assigned me to this house tonight because some of you need to elevate your thinking and your conversation. What's holding back your faith is your thinking. I'm going to be very specific because I want to pray. It's the last thing I do. I want to pray tonight. There are some people in the, and I'm going to call it a couple of categories. I want you to get as close to this altar as you can. Um, there are some people in here tonight, and I want you to, I'm going to be very specific. So come if this is what I'm calling. You know God has given you an anointing to be an entrepreneur. And you got frustrated because you haven't been able to get the finances. And you took that as a sign that it wasn't from God. The devil is a liar. Tonight you need to go home and take it out to draw a dust, blow the dust off of it. Because God said, I'm going to give you the whole business plan and you won't even have finances. You, you know God has put an entrepreneurial spirit on you. I want you to come to this altar right now. You know, you know. God, God has put business on you. Second category of people I want to call forward. And this is going to take honesty, transparency, and vulnerability. You know that your greatest dysfunction is your thinking. What's crippling your condition is your thinking. You, you just, you wake up thinking bad thoughts. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm, I'm in a series now for the beginning of the year on worry. And I was reading a book today where this author, this psychologist said, negative thoughts are the background noise in your mind. And the problem with us is we don't know how to cut down the noise. And there's some of you in here, it's your thinking, yeah, it'll never get better. I'll never get better. My marriage won't get better. My child is going to be on medication all their life. I don't know why I'm hearing this one. I'm never going to get pregnant. I heard that in my spirit. For somebody in here. I, it's never going to happen for us. 
I'm never going back to school. Or I'm in school, I'm never going to finish. It's your thinking. God has been trying to connect you to people who can speak stuff that births ideas in you. But you're thinking so loud you can't hear them. I want to pray tonight. I want to pray. I want to pray tonight. I want to pray tonight. And I want to. I want you. I want to be very clear before I pray. I'm not praying that you get delivered. That's waiting on you. I'm praying that you get your thinking together. And then you get yourself together and go get him. I'm not, I ain't praying tonight, Lord, please deliver them. No, that's, that's waiting on you. That's waiting on you. That's waiting on you. Tonight I'm praying for your thought life. And for others of you, I'm, I'm praying for your actions. That you don't contradict your conversation by just sitting there. And doing nothing. And I ain't go. You know, sometimes the Lord leads me and I'll go and I'll lay hands. I, I do. I, the Lord leads me that way sometimes. But I said in the sermon, which is why I'm not going to do it, because I don't want to contradict my presentation. That this ain't predicated on somebody laying hands on you. There was a man who came to Jesus one time and said, Jesus, one of my workers, she's sick unto death. <laughs> he told Jesus, you ain't got to come to my house. I don't, need, I don't need you to come lay hands. I don't need you to send no holy water. All I need you to do is speak a word. And I got enough faith to believe, watch this, Jesus, that the word you speak is going to beat me back to the house. Tonight, all I want to do is connect my faith to your faith. And I declare, if I be not a prophet, that if you activate your faith, the prayer I speak is going to beat you back to the situation that brought you to this altar. Would you lift your hands with me? Just, just a sign of surrender. Ain't no, no magic in it. It's just a hallelujah. Woo. Woo. here's what I'm asking you to do the lifting of the hands is a surrender I'm asking you before I pray surrender the negative thoughts you've been thinking I'm asking you to surrender the conversation you've been speaking I don't know who this is for surrender some of the negative connections you've made with people Ah, surrender it tonight. Surrender it. Release it. Whoosh. Release it tonight. Release it tonight. And so, Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, I come tonight connecting my faith to the faith of your people. Because there are people at this altar who have come with a belief and an expectation. They've come with a belief and an expectation that the miracle is already theirs. The supernatural blessing is already theirs. And so tonight, God, I'm simply connecting my faith to theirs. And I'm asking you, oh God, to help them work on their thinking. Help them get a renewed mind so that they are not conformed but transformed. God, I'm asking you tonight to help their old mind know some new tricks so that they'll begin to think spiritually and think faithfully and think expectation. God, tonight, Satan, we cast down every vain imagination. We cast down every stronghold. Satan, tonight, we bind every negative thought. We bring our thoughts
us under subjection to the power of the Holy Spirit. Satan, tonight, we evict you. There is no room for you in our thought life, in our conversation life. Tonight, oh God, tonight, oh God, ignite, ignite a spirit of expectation. Give somebody the business plan. Give somebody the vision for the business. And then connect them to the resources. Change somebody's negative thinking that when they wake up in the morning, they're going to wake up with a spirit of expectation. God, tonight, release us from negativity. I bind that strong man in the name of Jesus that we will leave this place thinking better, talking better, acting better, moving better because miracles and deliverance and healing and breakthrough are waiting on us. I pray it over some marriage. Some wife is at this altar, God. And they were just about giving up, but tonight reignite their expectation. I pray for some parent tonight who's about giving up on that child. Reignite their faith to believe that the miracle is coming. And God, I declare tonight that this is about to be an accelerated miracle. It's going to happen earlier than we expected. It's going to happen sooner than we anticipated because we're going to ignite our faith. then connect us to people whose testimonies become the energy that pushes us forward. Put us in the face of people who've been going through longer than we've been going through and show us what you did for them that they might be our push. I claim it already done. I claim it already done. I claim it's already done. I claim that it's already done. Now, if you're not ashamed, I want you to open up your mouth and just begin to speak the words of faith like you believe that it's already. Come on, open up your mouth. It's already done. It's already done. 